So we're gonna check out the Emporia. I think I can actually say this name correctly. I, there's no sponsor or anything. They did not send this to me. A good buddy in Discord, Hefnil or Hefnel. I see I even screw up his name. Why are you kidding? So the way this video is gonna be laid out, if you're not gonna to wanna to do the whole local thing, you just want stuff just stuck in the cloud because it's super simple, hey, no judging, do your thing, throw it in the cloud. So definitely we will go through and do some of the stuff and pairing and on the app and whatnot and show some little tests and things. And if you get to the part where you don't wanna do the local stuff, hey, by all means, you can just smash the like or whatever it might be, shoot us a comment and hit the road. Then you can maybe come back later if you really wanna decide that, hey, yeah, the cloud does suck because someone's farming and making money off of you or whatnot. And come on back and we'll show you how to put this thing local and take it out the cloud because AWS does go down. There's been several times that you haven't been able to get your power monitoring data. And quick note to Emporia, if you are watching this and you're starting to freak out, don't freak out. We're a small little niche of people. Definitely embrace your geeks because you make a good product. You don't need that much of an advertisement budget because we're just going to sell the hell out of them doing some word of mouth stuff. And you're going to maybe get some other different customers that are doing the cloud thing and doing all the other stuff and not just wanting to take it out the cloud like us. So embrace this. You'll be able to make some good sales because a lot of us geeks do band together and we vote with our wallet. Let me tell you a little secret. Go ahead and add an advanced feature in the firmware that maybe you got to hit yes a bunch of times. That way we can add our own local MQTT server and get this data out without having to go through all this. You'll even sell even more. It'd be pretty cool. So with that said, the box actually is going to go in your breaker box. So if you don't feel comfortable installing this thing, you're going to be messing with electricity. Find an electrician, friend, buddy that's not drunk or not, hasn't been drinking too much and he'll help you get this installed and do it right because you don't want to be messing with electricity because sometimes you cannot turn off the top of the breaker box unless you go out and pull the meter and you don't want to do that and upset the power company. The cool thing I thought about this was there's no external power supply to this. So this goes in there and then this antenna will be outside the breaker box because, you know, Wi-Fi sucks going through metal and this gets around that issue is you have this antenna outside and has this little kind of boot thing that's on it. It does do up to three phases or three different voltages. And this particular kit that I have comes with 16 50 amp sensors so you get 16 sub circuits to do around the house so say if you want to monitor your dishwasher or your electric dryer you want to know when it shuts off this is perfect for that and then you're going to get two clamps that do the split phase in the residential us now the same box can do three phases for other countries and areas that have three phases, but you just have to get another clamp. They have a different kit that has a different set of these larger clamps. These larger clamps, they say these are for up to 200 amps. So that would be your total consumption of your entire breaker panel over your entire home. And these just clamp around the wires on them and they just open up and then they'll go over the particular wire inside the breaker panel and it's like little headphone jacks that go through and plug into the box itself. Pretty simple little setup and the cool part is it has Bluetooth, ESP32 inside so it's easy to pair up and of course easy to go local but that's later on the video. So we'll grab some more stuff, get a little closer and look at doing some wattage testing and see how it looks in the app itself. Now, one thing I did find that was weird was since this was already paired, since someone else went ahead and paired it with their account and agreed to all the terms and conditions, and I'm not wanting to do that because I'm going local with it, I couldn't figure out a way to hard reset this to put it on another account. I looked through all their FAQs. If maybe you know a way to hard reset this and put it back where it's just stock, like out of it came out of the box with no parity or anything 
definitely let me know. I'd like to see how we can do that to get it on a different account. So just a closer look at exactly how this works is this box is really simple. It just has all the different little headphone jacks along the side and they all are labeled on the back and no yours doesn't come with black electrical tape. I did cover up any special serial numbers or code that I didn't want to get my buddy's device blacklisted because Emporia gets pissed off at this video. But hey, that's a whole nother deal. Now you just simply plug in the little CT clamps and it measures the amount of amperage being pulled through the wire. And these just clamp on to one wire out of not the neutral and the hot. This just goes over the hot. And then they do have to go the correct direction based on the draw. And how do I know which direction? Just take a guess. And if it does show negative, well, just flip it around. It's that simple. It's a lot easier than trying to figure out based on what phase you're on or whatever, or which side of the panel. If you're dealing with three phases, yeah, just easy to do. So on the bench, I'm gonna use this on the little cliff quick test and we'll hook it up to a light bulb and we're gonna do some simulated power draw based off of, an, of a light bulb, but I'll wrap it multiple times. Oh, hell no. So I went to install the app and this was the first thing I saw. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. What the hell is even that? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that, I, I forgot. If you're doing it, stop it, get some help. Not using my phone to pair this sucker up. Huge pass. And they wonder why we want to do stuff local and not with the damn cloud. You're gonna copy my clipboard? What if I had a message to someone else that I was copying from one app to another and now Emporia has that message? No thanks. So they do have a little web app that looks very similar to their Android iOS app. So pretty cool that they do have that. But as you can see, it is kind of a noisy device I find that, and I know it is doing a large scale. So we are seeing, this is actually looking at one of the individual circuits. So this is a, about a one amp load that is actually on, no, it's actually a half an amp. I was wrong before. I got doing the math wrong. I always said math is hard, right? So we're at 60 watts, given 120 volts. So we should be around half an amp. So we're at half amp load, 50 amp scale. Now it's kind of noisy, but hey, I don't know. You do the math more. There's that math word again of what percent accuracy that is. So I would like to see they could kind of smooth that out a little bit. Maybe that's just some of the chip can't do that really. Now we'll take a look at the entire mains and not too bad. I expect this to jump around even more because again, of course, that's the 200 amp they, as they claim scale versus, you know, that half amp. So it's going to jump around even more. So we are getting that 56 sometimes and I even saw a 62. So yeah, you can see the accuracy is just not exactly there with this. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going through different things but you can see they want you to feed all the data from smart plugs and EV chargers and electric vehicles. I don't have any of that stuff, but then they want, there's different notifications. I guess if you, I was playing around doing the oven was left on, um, you know, if you have different, I don't know, energy saving opportunities. Oh, this feature is not yet functional. Okay. So you can dig off into there and maybe some neat stuff. But one thing I didn't see was, I mean, I found the amps, but I did not see how you could look up the voltage. And yeah, there's that 0.49 amps. Let's change ours over there since I don't know how to compute amps. So it's fairly close. Of course, we're dealing with amps instead of watts. So it's going to be a little different there. We're at 0.48 and they're jumping around a little bit on that one circuit. It's not too bad. It just depends on how picky you want to be. And yeah, the cost is not too bad for this unit, but I don't see where you can pull up the voltage. So 
I, I don't know how they assign the different circuits because you have all the different 16 circuits. So I don't know how you assign the different circuits over to the different sides of the panel. I'm not sure exactly how that's done. Maybe there's some special way it does it by sensing the, the out of phase on it possibly. I'm not exactly sure, but maybe there's some little magic to it. It looks like it has some stuff with solar, with excess generation and peak demand. I don't have any of the different peak stuff or even solar here for me to even mess with. Pretty cut and dry, simple for my particular setup. So not a whole lot to it. Let's see if we can up the amperage by taking and wrapping the wire and just see what we can do with the scale. Now, if you're just wanting to do the same thing I did, you can see I'm just taking and just take and wrap the wire in the coil. So if you've got the wire passed through once, just pull you enough slack. Remember, you want the same conductor and just pass it through the one time. You can come through again and come through again. And this will help you if you want to check the scale of something because you can imagine if you've taken, say, a hair dryer that's 1800 watts or something like that, or whatever wattage it is, and now you've multiplied it by three or four times, you can really test the scale of some of these larger CT clamps without having to have some massive crazy load, and maybe you don't even have that, that's a constant load. So what I did is took and wrapped it the three times, and so we should get a three times increase because we're passing that same current around there three times. And so I want to take a look and see what the wattage jumps around using that now this is looking at the entire mains so not too bad once you do load it down i think me only using it that lower wattage probably not a good thing um maybe we'll get this installed actually in the panel but i do have some upcoming work in my panel so i don't want to be digging off in there just yet and we'll look at the individual circuit so it kind of isolates and, and quiets down when there's additional load on it. So I can see some circuits that you maybe have 100 watts or more possibly. Then they may not be as noisy. So let's take a look. I did want to say and compare this actually to that circuit setup board and see how close and how noisy things are. So I'm going to power this guy up. And we're going to do the same thing. I've got the clamps for Emporia on the wire and we're going to put the one for the circuit setup on here as well. Now this is that circuit setup board and this is the ESP home side of it because yeah just mainly you're going to run ESP home on it. There is a lot of different calibrations so you can really get it tweaked down exactly like you need. and. This one, we're running on 58.7, which I think on the meter, we're 58.2. Yeah, 58, 58.2. Fairly close. I could tweak it probably a little more. I don't think there's any calibrations on the Emporium. Now, you'll notice we're not bumping around a whole lot compared to the Emporia. Now, again, remember, I do have the 100 amp versus the 50 amp that the Emporia has. So there's already kind of a disadvantage on the circuit setup one, but it has a little more precise power monitoring chip. So it does jump around a little bit over time. This is looks like it's running like a five minute graph right now. And this is, you know, it's staying within 58 watts though, compared to the Emporia. Yeah, I'm still with you, unfortunately. Emporia is kind of jumping around. This is that single one. So it is a little bit noisier device. So just keep that in mind that when you're going through with it. But hey, the cost is a lot cheaper at this time and probably in stock. Now, things may get better. I know we're doing all the shortage things and all that. So you never know what's going to be in stock. So maybe you can't get whatever is the best for you. Just get what you can get and don't throw a fit, right? I. Definitely going to have to lean a little more towards the circuit setup board. It has a, the support is more mature compared to the Emporia. And also the chip monitoring is just hands down 
the precise compared to the hardware in Emporia, but hey, you do get what you pay for in this case. And a lot of times, I know it's just a one guy show, I think, over there at Circuit Setup. Maybe he's helped, got a couple others helping him out, so I don't want to speak for him. But I also help support the little local guy. He does make these in the US, and I just did prefer, I've been using these for years. But sometimes with that, they're out of stock, and you can get these on Amazon. It's a little cheaper at different times. So, yeah, with that, We'll have all the links down below. They are affiliate links, and the way those work, there's no additional cost to you, but it does help out the channel, and we do appreciate it. So you want to take Emporia out of the cloud. Definitely do, especially after I saw that copy my clipboard, and every time I open the app, yeah, I wasn't pairing it with my phone, of course. So there are normally four screws on here, but... I've already kind of messed with this and wanted to dump the firmware a while back. So once you do take out the screws, and it should just pop in half, and there it is. And behold the glory of the Espressive ESP32 that does all the things. And you can see all the cool little ports and everything. Do be careful of this antenna wire. They did glue it down, but potentially you don't want to unplug that. So there are a couple things you'll notice on here. At the top, that's going to be, again, your three phases. If you're going to be doing three phases, residential U.S., we're only doing two for the split phase. And, of course, these are all your circuits and everything for there. So this is the little power supply down at the bottom. And then you've got, of course, the ESP32. Now, you'll notice this little... I call them a pin header, programming header, whatever. I'm sure someone will tell me and correct me in the comments. But they are filled with solder. and But they are via holes, they, meaning that they go all the way through the board. Now, you'll notice mine has a pin header, this jagged looking, no, that's my soldering is not that screwy. They just have them kind of in this weird offset pattern. And potentially you don't really have to solder you could hold a pin header on there but uh, it's going to be a true pain in the ass and I, I guess you can maybe some type of little jig and a you know clip whatever you can come up with but really what you're needing and i'll zoom in a little closer once i do pull this out of the case because there is a back to this thing as well and these, you don't have to concern yourself with, but basically that's going to be the secondary microcontrollers that do the power monitoring on the different circuits. So the pins you're going to need to concern yourself with is the IO0 right here, and then the ground, the RXD, TXD, and then this is kind of confusing, but you'll see there's a VCC 3V3 and a VCC 5. That's your 5 volts and 3.3 volts. Don't get those mixed up. Don't get those mixed up. Now, I did the 3.3 volts. That's what I'm used to on my flashers for doing all the different ESP boards and whatnot. If you want to, you can use the 5 volt, but do not mix them up. So make sure that your USB TTL is set to the pin that you choose. What is the USB TTL? If you're new to this channel, well, let's talk about that right quick. So the USB TTL is basically just kind of what I talked about. There's the USB port. And then this is the CP2102. I find I had better luck with the CP2102s. I do have another little model, and I will leave all the links down below, but I have found that they are better at flashing different various things that have those secondary microprocessors. I did a whole video about it with the Treat Life dimmers. Now, you'll notice on this one, if we do zoom in, that under this plastic coating, you can see there is 3V3, TXD, RXD, ground, and 5 volts. So, Again, that's that 5 volts and 3 volts. You don't want to feed the 5 volts into the 3V3 port. That would be bad. That would overpower it, and you don't want to probably underpower it either. The TXD, you would think it goes to TXD on the board. No, it doesn't. TXD goes to RXD, and RXD goes to TXD because you have to receive 
on one that you're transmitting and then tr the transmit on the other has to receive the other. The GPIO zero, this IO zero, that kind of puts the chip in what we call bootloader mode. Think about it kind of in a way, the old school or well, even current computers these days where you're mashing F11, F12, delete or whatever to get into the BIOS. Kind of think of it like that. This IO zero is gonna allow you to get into the BIOS. That way you can put your own program on the ESP chip. Now, how do you do that? What you do with that is you need to ground GPIO zero at the time of powering up the chip, just like you would with a computer when you're trying to get into the BIOS. You can buy these and I will, of course, leave all the links. This just, you just snap them apart and you can take these little pins. What I did is I did, I soldered it and I just used some needle nose pliers and held one at a time because these are they were staggered weird as you can see and then i just pushed them through with a little bit of heat and they went right on through and that way i could always program this and make all the cool videos but if you're just wanting to do this one time you could just potentially snap off five or six or whatever it may be and then you could hold it on there on the little pads and they look kind of like this over here when they're not done now do keep in mind there is some little gunk like probably some old flux or whatever so you might need to take a old toothbrush and some alcohol and clean that up and that way you'd get good contact and you can see yeah trying to hold it on there with some wires and then trying to do it with some jumper wires to the usb ttl you can see you probably take a little bit of experience and trial and error to try to get it done so if you can do the solder method i would try to do it that way if you can so once you got all that hooked up and everything i'm gonna plug mine up and then we're gonna jump in and we're gonna do the esp home stuff and then we'll have esp home send the bin file over to it so i've got all mine hooked up got my rx to tx and tx to rx and then i also i use a little handmade little jumper that allows me to split i only have one ground pin on this usb adapter so i need two one to go to ground and one to go to gpio zero so i just make this little thing instead of trying to twist a bunch of wires together but you can do whatever now one thing i like to use and i know you're probably saying well travis just trying to sell me more shit no i can tell you i'm the idiot for not using this thing for several years like i should have been doing and it's just a simple little switch that passes data, but allows you to turn the USB TTL on and off with the flip of the button. And it's that simple. And when you get one, you're going to say, holy hell, why the hell did I use one of these before? I'm an idiot. Trust me. I've been there. So one thing I do like to check just so I know that I have everything set up and everything and done all my connections, not messing with apps. This is totally optional. You can just go to ESP Home Flasher, but I like to do just ESP tool dot pi flash ID. And you do have to have ESP tool pi installed. It's a really simple little Python thing. And you just press enter. And you should, if you have everything right, you should see it get and show it has the 8 meg flash, the Mac ID, and the whole nine yards. If you don't have it come up like that and just says invalid or whatever, well, there's some issue, maybe a driver on your USB TTL, and, or maybe you don't have GPIO zero held down, you got a battered solder joint, or you're not holding it correctly. So you can really just stop here because you want to get this. Now, do remember if you do this, do cycle the power, and again, that's where that little cable comes into play. You can just hit the switch and turn it on and off because once you do this, it's no longer in bootloader mode. So we gotta get it back into bootloader mode. So once you have power cycled the device, it's back in bootloader, don't check again. We do wanna back up the firmware. Again, this is optional, but it's a good idea to do it because you may not like ESP Home on it. You wanna go back to the cloud thing. Well. I go grab a link of a command out of the Tasmoda docs just because it's in there for backing up with ESP tool Pi, but we're going to change a few things. I'm going to let it auto do the port unless you have multiple devices and then, but I'm going to change the baud rate to 460800. You could do the 921600 or if you leave it default, it's going to do a 115 
200 really slow but just think of it, if you go faster you could potentially have some errors if you really want to have be ocd you could back it up twice and then do like a md5 or something on both files just to make sure that it does have the same exact code so we're reading the flash but we're going to read this is for one meg that's in this little example again we did that flash id it's eight megs so i'll change it to eight and then I'll just say image eight, and that's just whatever file name, and we'll change it to eight meg, and then we'll hit enter. So, and yeah, and while you wait, you know, you can just go ahead and smash the like, shoot us some comments, and do the thing, and patronize the video. It's all the cool stuff, because again, it's cool and stuff. So I'll fast forward for you, if you haven't already. So how do we put ESP Home on this thing, and all the code stuff? I don't know how to do all that stuff, right? Well, the cool people, the smart people have done all the work for us, and it is evolving probably pretty much every day. Hopefully, potentially, this will be actually in the main branch of ESP Home if they get their way. Right now, it's in a GitHub gist or gist or however you want to say it. That's a whole thing of a GIF or GIF. But hey, and I don't pronounce things right, of course, if you want to just skip all this stuff or if you want to read his stuff as well, that's all cool. He has all the code right here, and it's pretty much just gonna be a copy and paste, and then you'll change up stuff that you want in ESP Home. And of course, you'll, you won't change the names or whatnot, but they have all the code down there for you. They even have cool instructions, and if you don't wanna listen to me ramble, and you can just change this stuff right there. Now, he's got a little different way, I, he's talking about flashing it and everything, and taking apart DuPont jumpers, Everybody has their own way to hook up USB TTLs and you can see he did solder the same exact pins and look his looks kind of screwy like mine. I don't know why they did it like that. I, I don't know why they designed that PCB. It's weird. Plug him in. It looks like he is using the 5 volt. So do again pay attention when you are flashing this thing. So he's using a little different method to do the GPIO zero to touch the case to the ground. But you, again you can do what you want on that. Now, one thing I did want to point out, because I ran straight into this because I do prefer to use MQTT in ESP Home, because, you know, MQTT is life. No hate on the devs that did all the API stuff, but I just prefer it. They don't have it working right now due to the way that they had to do the ESP IDF framework. And it's all geeky stuff if your eyes are rolling in the back of your head. You're more than welcome to read this and even add comments. And if this changes, I'll change the link down in the description of the video. And that way you can just go get the software and stuff and do all the thing. So basically what I do is in ESP Home. And if you haven't installed it, it's just going to be a little add-on or whatnot inside Home Assistant. Or you can go and add the Docker container to ESP Home. They have all the instructions to get started with ESP Home. And if you hit New Device, I'll just hit Continue. And we'll just call it Emporia 1. And I like to just go ahead and just bang on the keyboard. It's fun stuff. And then we'll do ESP32, and then we'll say skip. Because I just need a placeholder. You're going to hit edit. And this is exactly where that code that's in that GitHub, and you'll paste it straight into here. So we'll snag all this good stuff all the way down. No, we don't need to paste pictures. And then we'll paste this into the little GUI here. Now... They will, if you're using API passwords and all that stuff, I don't use them. I just take that stuff out. And then I have some little different stuff I use for my Wi-Fi. And you'll just want to go ahead and put your stuff in there and hit save. So I have a little different one that I did because I have issues with the way the MDNS stuff works in ESP Home. And I always put statics in mine. So I just have my static IP get stored in my secrets file. And I did do the substitution name imp view and it changed some of the names down here. But of course you can, you know, I just did the display name that would say imp view phase a voltage. I don't see at that time some of the different ways to do the, I guess, calibrations. If you find it is off, I think that may change over time. I don't know, but of course there's different filters and stuff you can do in ESP home to get things right on par with the different clamps. 
when you hit save and then you go to hit install now i don't have mine connected straight up because i just want the bin file and i'm going to use esp home flasher but if you do hit install you can follow through this and do the plug into the computer plug into the dashboard etc i just do my manual downloads and once you do that this time if you do any updates you can just do it ota you don't have to plug in or anything it's just this one time just to get it on your network now i did find even though i do have this running on like a 12 core processor computer with docker container is pretty quick it does take forever compared to other esp home sensors on doing the compiling so once you do it just have some patience it just you'll see hit manual download and this part is just gonna just yeah it takes 15 20 minutes i think i don't know maybe i'll time it and put the time up there and but that's another boring part of the video for you to watch if you do remember i am using esp home flasher to flash this you could use the esp tool pie or whatever the little different tools everybody kind of has their own way to do it I just use the little gooey thing they have here and using com3 do remember if you did back up your device or did that flash id do power cycle it to put it back in the bootloader i'm picking the bin file it downloaded hitting flash esp and hopefully we'll fire it right up and erasing flash that's all good and it should start doing the thing and writing all the stuff to it yeah it looks a little crazy but hey, it doesn't take too, too long. It's just a small little bin file to write to it. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, well, I don't see the logs yet and everything. Well, this way we're doing it, it can't reset it because we don't have all the pins to do so. Plus, we have GPIO zero held down all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and power cycle it. And then I'm just going to go look in the ESP Home dashboard for it. And do remember to take the GPIO zero from ground off of it. All right, let's look at the logs. So at this point, we can see we got the new firmware on it. It's inside Home Assistant, added the integration, did all the things. So at this point, I'm gonna take the USB flasher off of it since it's just powering with 3.3 volts. And I'm gonna power it by mains and then put that light bulb load on it so we can actually see it inside of Home Assistant. So we're back on the network and we got some power and let's check out our circuits. I did have it under number one. You are showing the voltage. It's a little bit low. I think we're on 122 about right now. Last I did check and maybe I don't have it clamped all the way. Aha, I had the wire clamps going the wrong way. So as you can see, now we have circuit power 57 watts. And then we also have the total phase A power is 57 watts as well. Now I did notice, you notice some of these, there's no clamps hooked up to them at all. And they'll just start bumping around 14 watts, 17 watts. I think it's back to just due to this kind of this device is a little noisy. So I would plug in all those different CT clamps and put them on something and you probably have a load on it. You shouldn't have this issue. And yeah, I know they have different caps on there. Maybe this may change in the future with the different firmware on ESP Home. But for right now, definitely going to have to make sure and do put all your different CT clamps on it. At least that's what I found. So we got the heat gun going. You can see we got our 500 watts there. So we're showing like 589 watts on the circuit setup one. I did want to make sure I do have a Sonoff S31 plug that's calibrated and we're showing like 530 watts. So you can see nobody's in agreement on what should be what. And we get a professional meter and you can definitely test this out. And yeah, the sorry for the loud background noise. That's my heat gun. So of course things are going to change definitely. And hopefully this will get easier to go local. But hey, definitely innovation. We weren't able to do this and take it out of the cloud several months ago. So definitely awesome. And thanks to the dev team for the ones working on this. Definitely some amazing work. So I appreciate you watching. All the subscribers, Patreon folks, and all the things. It definitely helps bring new projects and products to the channel all the time. And yep, you know the drill. 
Press all them buttons. Y'all left me hanging, bro. Press all them buttons. And try again. Because you start with because here in your line. Because it's cool and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. Press all them buttons. Because it's cool and stuff. Press all them buttons. Because it's cool and stuff. Press all them, you gotta hit me right with, press all them buttons. Because it's cool and stuff. 